Good afternoon. My name is Richard Tripp. I want to thank everyone for coming this afternoon. Uh, I want to especially thank the Veterans of Foreign Veterans, Ve Veterans Affairs of coming to uh, present this seminar on how the VA is making it easier for veterans to use their health benefits. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Mike. Thank you, sir. I'd like to uh, specifically thank the VFW Post 1617 and your auxiliary, and in particular, my contact here, uh, Marine veteran uh, Kevin Gurley. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, this whole um, presentation developed out of a, a, a situation that Kevin was having uh, at one of his visits to the VA. And fortunately, I was able to help him by uh, showing him how he could access uh, the pharmacy through My Healthy Vet. So thank you, Kevin, and uh, again, thank you, Post 1617. So again, uh, my name is Mike Bickrist. I'm a uh, former active duty Army MP, served for just over seven years, uh, had a rather lengthy break in service, and now I'm a proud member of the New Hampshire Army National Guard, third of the 197th Field Artillery Regiment. Currently uh, serving as the Outreach Coordinator for the Veterans Affairs uh, Manchester Medical Center. So for those of you who don't know, uh, the VA is actually broken up into a couple of different segments. So we're actually going to have some folks from uh, the Veterans Benefits Administration speaking here a little bit later. Uh, again, I represent the Veterans Health Administration, the Medical Center, and there's also the National Cemetery Administration. This is a picture of our campus at 718 Smith Road in Manchester. Um, hopefully a lot of you are already familiar with it, but if you're not, that's why we're here today. We also uh, here in New Hampshire have a number of outlying uh, community-based outpatient clinics. Um, you may be familiar with our location at Pease, right next to the main gate. Uh, we also have a facility at Tilton, at Summersworth, and at Conway. Another thing that we like to uh, promote when we're in the community is that a good portion of our uh, staff at the VA, um, we're also veterans. So when you come to uh, the medical center here at Manchester or to one of our CBOX, you know, you're not just dealing with, um, you know, folks that may not have a, a, an understanding of some of the things that you've been through. You're dealing with um, Air Force personnel, you're dealing with former Marines, Army, you know, we run the gamut. So we have been in uh, your boots and we try to understand and empathize with your situation. And I will now introduce Lynn from VBA. Thank you, Mike. All right, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, good afternoon, yeah. Um, so as you introduced me, I'm Lynn. I was in the Army for three years. I was infantry. Um, I locked out. Uh, I actually went through a new program called WarTech, where they hire people right into the VA that's getting right out of the service. So they, right on active duty, I trained for a month, and then I got a phone call up to New Hampshire, and they hired me. So I'm really grateful for that opportunity, and I'm grateful to be here to you know, give a small presentation about some of the benefits that the Veteran Benefit Administration offers. So as you can see, uh, Really, that's kind of just a paragraph of like what the Veteran Benefit Administration does. Um, there's a lot of different benefits that we offer, but the four most popular ones is uh, the compensation, uh, pension, uh, the VA home loan program, and also v, uh, VR and E services, which is voc vocational rehabilitation and education. So um, if you're not familiar with the compensation, it's actually a monetary benefit that's paid out to veterans um, due to to disease, injury, or events that happen in service that has made them disabled. Um, it's tax-free. Uh, it's it pays out every month, uh, tax-free. Yeah, and then so that's kind of like the gist of kind of what compensation is. Uh, the next slide, I'll go into a little bit more about how it works, and we'll go from there. Uh, pension helps wartime veterans, their family, and survivors if they're below what we call the MAPAR, which is the max annual percentage rate. So there's a limit set by Congress for uh, the poverty level. So if you are a, a veteran of wartime and you're below that threshold, 
you could be entitled to pension. It kind of, it's like a substitute money, um, actually again, that's tax free. Um, it kind of helps you survive, brings you up to that level. Uh, it's only available to veterans that serve during a wartime though. Uh, then it's a VA home loan program. So the VA home loan program, if you're not too familiar with it, it guarantees a certain portion of the loan. Uh, it makes it where banks are more willing to get you a better uh, interest rate. Um, also, uh, there's certain few steps you have to go through to get the house appraised. It's a little different uh, than the rest of the um, than a traditional uh, mortgage, but it's fantastic because uh, it can get you a better interest rate. Uh, it's actually really quite easy to go through. Most banks, uh, most federal credit unions uh, will do a VA home loan. All you have to do actually uh, is go on eBenefits, uh, eBenefits.com. It's a great website. You can actually print off your certificate of eligibility within five minutes. Uh, there is a paper version, uh, but that can, take, that can take a little bit longer. So uh, uh, VR and E services, pretty much if you're service connected with a disability and you want some help finding, uh, finding work or uh, interested in further education, that you can talk to them after you get service connected and they'll sit down and have a meeting with you. Um, great folks, actually, I used it for a short time um, because of my service connected disabilities and uh, they helped me uh, achieve my goal that I wanted for my education. All right, so again, I, I like to talk mostly about compensation because that tends to be the most popular um, benefit. So service connection means that the condition has been recognized to have occurred, like I already said, uh, by a disease or injury uh, or aggravated during active military service. So I want to just br I put this in a slide disability rating because um, I want you to understand what happens after you get service connected. So your disability rating is when we assign a disability, uh, well, I'm sorry, we assign you a disability rating based on the severity of your disability. We use this rating to determine your compensation rate, which is broken down from 0% zero to 100%. That works in 10% er, uh, increments. So you, you won't be service connected for six or seven, it's gonna be 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to 100. Um, obviously, as percentages go higher, the monetary benefit is greater, and it can also put you into a, uh, a different priority group for your health, which we will discuss uh, after two more slides. So um, evidence that's usually used to assign you a disability rating is evidence that you give us. Uh, private medical records, if you have any private uh, health uh, primary care that's not through the VA, we can take those records. We actually can go after those records for you on your behalf. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we can fill out paperwork and we can go get them. Uh, then the results of your, uh, your VA claim CNP. So CNP just means compensation and pension exam. Um, DBQ, disability benefit questionnaire. That's what, when we send you to a doctor, that's what they fill out for the scheduler rate. If they ask the doctor will ask you a bunch of questions, and then we take that form, and that's how we come up with your uh, disability rating. And then other information, for example, there's a benefit that some people don't know about. It's called individual employability. If you're disabled and you just can't get a job, um, and you're rated, maybe uh, doesn't really matter what you're rated. It just depends on the severity of your uh, of disability. Uh, if you're rated 70% or so and you just can't get a job, you can claim individual employability and we'll actually pay you at the 100% rate and uh, potentially you could become permanent total with that. There's, that's another thing. But essentially it's a benefit that will help you since you can't get a job because um, of your disabilities. It's a great benefit. Actually, we're going to stick around later if you have, anyone has any questions about that. So how to file a claim? Come see us at the presentation. We can file a claim for you right now if you wanted to. Uh, visit us at va.gov. Um, honestly, I, that's what I do. I like to do everything online because I, actually when I go on va.gov, ebenefits.com e actually, it will tell me every step of the process the claim is in. Um, and it, t it tells me all my disabilities. Also on ebenefits, you can generate VA letters. If you need a tax indemnity letter, you can get that right online. Um, or you can go through a veteran service organization. So 
I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but in the Norris Cotton Federal Building, there's actually a VF, uh, VFW office, uh, John and Nancy. They're there and they'll help you file claims on your behalf. They act as a power of attorney. They are recognized by the VA. Uh, or you can come visit, uh, same here, you can come visit us at Public Contact. We're on the sixth floor, uh, 275 Chestnut Street, Manchester. Uh, same location, the VFWs. They're just on the fifth floor. Um, we'd love to see you if you want to come up. Uh, next, please. So priority groups. So I was talking about uh, your source-connected disabilities, uh, different uh, zero to 100. So on the VHA side, the Veteran Health Administration side, uh, they have eight groups. Yeah, there's eight priority groups. Um, depending on your group, your copay, even if you pay a copay, is going to change. Uh, we can go in more detail after the presentation about that, but I just want to give you a quick run over is if you're source connected 50% or greater, you're in the first priority group. So your health care is free, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, any health care through the VA, it's free. Um, 30 to 40% is uh, priority group two. And then uh, group three, uh, did they move Purple Heart to one? I thought there was. Yeah, I'm not sure. There's been a change. I think there's, there's been a change, change. yeah. So bear yeah. with us there. There may be a change. Yeah. I think they, now if you're a Purple Heart recipient, I think you automatically go into uh, priority group one. I will have to double check that for you. Uh, but priority, oh, sorry. Um, that's fine. Former POWs, and then your 10, 20 service connected. And then again, when you're going through the voc rehabilitation program, you actually get automatically put into priority group three. All right, next, please. All right. Uh, prior, uh, prior group four, uh, VA aid and attendance and seriously disabled, I can't pronounce that word, so I'm not even going to try, um, seriously disabled. So aid and attendance is another benefit that the Veteran Benefit Administration uh, offers. Essentially, if your service-connected disabilities cause it where you're housebound or need the care of another individual, they'll actually pay you a, spe a special monthly compensation. Um, that's another benefit that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, priority group five, uh, this is where non-service connected uh, veterans come in or they're a zero percent uh, whose annual income is below the established VA means test. Uh, again, that's based off the max annual percentage rate, I think, yeah. And then, uh, next one please. Right. Priority group six, World War I veterans, uh, environmental exposed veterans, burn pits, uh, Vietnam veterans who served in country or in brown water. Persian Gulf War veterans, and then veterans who served in a theater of combat after 11, uh, 1980. 11, 19, 19, yeah. All right, next, please. All right, and priority group seven, veterans with gross household income below the geographical adjusted income threshold. So essentially, living in New Hampshire is expensive. I used to live in Texas. The geographical threshold would be a lot lower in Texas than it is up here. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, then priority group eight, veterans with gross household uh, income above the VA national income thresholds and the GMT income threshold for their resident location and who agree to make co-payments. Um, not all veterans in priority group are eligible for enrollment. Um, that's actually why a lot of people like to come to the VBA afterwards because as soon as you get service connected, you become eligible for being enrolled in uh, Veterans Health Administration. And and dental care. So um, this has been ah, dental care. Yeah. So unfortunately, dental care is only available to certain uh, portions of veterans. And that is if you're uh, service connected 100% permanent total, uh, former prisoner of war, or within 180 days of discharge from, uh, from service, um, dental trauma ratings. So if you got hit in baseball with a baseball bat while you're in um, and your service connected for it, you'll get coverage. And then if you're enrolled in the vocational rehabilitation program, um, yeah, this right here says uh, have a dental condition clinically determined by a VA to be associated with and aggravating a service connected medical condition. So if something is at, like you're service connected for TMG or t uh, TM, uh, your law, your Yes, thank you. Um, and your teeth are getting screwed up. It's possible you could get some help. Um, and that's, dental care is one of those things where there's act, they're trying to push it through Congress to get it uh, available to everyone. But unfortunately, at this time, you still have to meet these requirements. 
All right, next one, please. And actually, I think that's it. So I'm going to hand it back over to Mike. Um, and I appreciate you listening to me. And uh, we'll be available. We'll be available afterwards for questions. All right. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate it. Um, so if you have not already obtained your veterans or your VA health ID card, um, it's something that all enrolled veterans are eligible for. Um, we have the documentation here. Uh, we can help you complete that today. So this is uh, a website like Lynn was mentioning earlier. Um, you can go here. I believe it's just a, a question of uh, doing a few uploads of some documentation and then you can, uh, you can speak to that? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we actually get a lot of questions. We actually get a lot of questions about this. I'm sorry, Mike. Oh, um, so there's actually two uh, veteran identification cards. Uh, one is the health, well, once you be, uh, enroll in the health care through the Veterans Health Administration, they give you a little card with a picture. The other one um, is actually just kind of for discounts at stores. Uh, you go to you know Home Depot, they offer, I forgot what they offer, like a 5%, 10%, I can't remember. You show them that ID. Yeah, <laughs> so you can actually just go right on va.gov um, and like Mike said, you honestly, you just upload a uh, picture of yourself and uh, DD14 and they send it to you in your mail. Yeah. All right, sorry about that, Mike, here you go. Thank you. Thanks, Len. Absolutely. Have you go to the next slide, please. So here are some helpful numbers uh, for VA at Manchester. And again, uh, we'll be providing the slide to, uh, slides to you all and will be available for questions after. This is a question that comes up on occasion. Um, there have been some changes recently. If you do have a uh, service that is other than honorable, they will review it on a case-by-case -case basis. And this is the latest information available at va.gov. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, when you say pension, are you talking about military retired pay or are you talking about, okay. All right, so yes, so there's two ways to go about doing that. Um, there are CDRP and the CR, CS, I think. Well, yes, that's right. So, yep. Um, essentially, if you are retired and have 20 years, uh, 20, years of uh, 20 years in the military, uh, and you're uh, rated 50% or greater, you can collect both. Uh, the same thing with CRC, uh, wow, I cannot talk today. CRS. Thank you. Um, if it's related to that, you can actually collect both and won't offset. Right, won't offset. Correct, yeah, so that, that's absolutely correct. Yep. That's something new, right? um, No, it's been around for years, actually, yeah. I've never, never heard about it until I read it in the magazine the other day. That's one of the reasons we're out Yeah, here. absolutely, yeah. Uh, any other questions? You indicated, uh, when you were going through the uh, service connected level of one, two, three, you said if you were service like one, SC1, that 100% uh, covered no co pays. Yep. Okay. As you go down through there, you didn't say anything, but is that the only one where there's no co pay? Correct. Okay. Um, as you go down, well, there's actually a caveat to that. Um, if you're service connected for whatever condition, you, the treatment for that service connection disability is free. So even if you're priority group eight, uh, hearing, uh, hearing loss is a very common one, actually. We see a lot. Um, a lot of veterans will claim hearing loss and tinnitus are also known as tinnitus. Um, you can actually, when you get service connected, you can get free hearing aids through the VA. Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, let's just say, for instance, that I paid a copay mm -hmm. for going to the hearing doctors and for going up to the VA and everything, and then I became uh, covered and service connected and I get it. All that co-pays that I paid prior to becoming them determining that it was service connected, 
Ooh, that's a good question. Um, to be honest. So let us get back to you on that. Sir. Yeah. You know, one of the things that um, is challenging about this is we're beholden to the rules that we were just explaining. But inevitably, some of those. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I like. I like. <laughs> so, uh, great question. We appreciate the question. Um, as you all know, VA is a very uh, big bureaucracy, and it's not possible for us to get our hands around all of those uh, questions. And even in the, the subcategories, um, or in the, um, the eight categories, there are subcategories within them. So what we like to do is kind of step aside with each veteran, get a little bit more information about them to try and help them to determine, you know, what specifically is going on with them and how we can best help them. So bear with me. What we'd like to do is get your contact information, sir, and then we can follow up once we've talked to the appropriate subject matter expert. Okay? Appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's new because it has your um, yeah. has your branch on. So you don't have to apply to another. No. no. So one other thing, while I have the floor, then if there are no other questions. Um, so as you're all aware, we do have uh, suicide prevention coordinators at the VA Manchester. Um, I'm. Uh, not affiliated with suicide prevention other than the fact that I'm the outreach coordinator and then I'm also a veteran. And I always like to hand out our suicide prevention cards which has the veterans crisis line on that to each of the veterans in the room and anybody else who's here. Um, because even if you may not have some concerns, you may run into somebody who does. So I always like to ask all of the veterans in the room to put this in your wallet. Um, I've got mine here on my ID. I'm sure Lynn and uh, Russ are carrying theirs as well. So I'd like to ask all of you today to take one of these with you. And if you'd like to take more than one, please feel free. Um, again, it's all of our responsibilities to be looking out for our brothers and sisters. Um, and if we're all set with that, I'd like to switch gears to the reason that we all came here today, which is the My Healthy Vet application. And so what you'll see um, here on the screen is the landing page once you've logged into myhealth.va.gov. Um, which is the My Healthy Vet application, which is um, our electronic portal. And what it does, among other things, is it lets veterans, like with uh, Kevin's situation, access uh, the pharmacy. It lets you all check your appointments. It lets you send secure messaging back and forth with the VA Medical Center. And it also allows you to review your uh, VA medical records. So what I'd like to do is to go through each one of these and just uh, give you a little bit of the highlights. So I can have you scroll down just a little bit, Lynn. Keep going. There you go. So we're going to go right here to refill prescriptions. Right there, Lynn. Okay. Thank you. So this is good training for Lynn as well. So thank you for having us out. So once you've logged in, uh, you've got to the refill prescriptions application if you can continue to scroll down. Stop right there. So I do not at this time get meds with the VA, but if I did, they would get listed out on this page. And you'll see this column here where it says select to refill. There'll be a box there that you can click in. At the bottom of the page, as Kevin knows, I see him shaking his head. You can just click on submit. Once you've submitted, there'll be a blue bar that appears over here that says tracking. You can then click on that bar and it gives you an estimated time of arrival for your medications and a confirmation number. Not all medications are available to order through My Healthy Vet, um, the vast majority, but there are some meds that you're going to need to stand in front of the doc or the pharmacist to get a renewal. Yes, ma'am. So, I would have to get back to you on that. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that's happening behind the scenes, so to speak, but I can get you an answer. I believe that, um, yes, sir. So sorry about that. For those of you who didn't hear, the question was, uh, who is the pharmacy or um, what is the, the program that's backing up the prescription orders? And um, we're going to get back to you on that. Um, I don't want to say something that's incorrect, and I'm not sure the, the proper answer there. 
I can have you go back to the home page. I always like to go back to the home page and that way you can all see which application or which portion of the application I'm accessing. So we're going to go to appointments next. Have you scroll down just a little bit? So if you click here on the health calendar. Uh, have you scroll down just a little bit, please, Lynn? So you can see right here, you have different options that you can select on what you'd like to see. You click update. Okay, no, that's fine. Continue to scroll down. Once you've clicked update, it's going to populate that information on the calendar for you. And there are also different views. You can see it as a list. You can see it whatever is most convenient for you. And then if you scroll back up, there's even a print option here. So you don't necessarily have to log into My Healthy Vet each time if you want to check your schedule for the month or whatever. You can just print it up, have it available at your leisure. I'll have you go back to the home page, Lynn. So we're going to go into the secure messaging feature now. Click on compose a message. I'll have you scroll down just a little bit, please. So that brings you to this page. What really separates uh, the My Healthy Vet secure messaging from, say, standard email, other than the security feature itself, is this block right here. So what you'll do is you'll go to the down arrow here, and you'll notice that my primary care doc, Dr. Kwan, is right up here at the top. Your primary care physician will be there as well. If you can go back to the down arrow, please, Lynn. I also like to point this out, ask a My Healthy Vet coordinator. So if you're having any questions or any concerns with My Healthy Vet, you can contact the coordinator right there at Manchester. All right. You'll notice that my list seems rather small. So I'm there at the VA all day, every day, all right? But for most veterans, it literally fills the page. You know, chaplain to x-ray, whomever you're needing to contact, they're there. If they're not there, contact the My Healthy Vet coordinator and say, hey, I've just recently gotten in, involved with this clinic. Can you add this doc? Um, I used to be seen at West Haven, but I'm not anymore. Can you please remove them so that it's more convenient for me to, to navigate around? Once you've selected uh, where you'd like to send the message, just give them a heads up, you know, what is this about? Is it just general information? Um, are you looking to cancel an appointment? Are you looking to get an appointment? Give them a little bit of a heads up here in the subject line. Type your message. You click send and you're good to go. But I also like to point out you can also add attachments. So say you're seen in the community for care. The doc gives you a lab result. You can upload that to My Healthy Vet. You can then send it off to the doc at the VA so they can review it and stay on the same page with you. Have you go back to the top, please, Lynn? Back to the home page. No, nope, right here. Yep, there you go. And we're going to now take a look at the health record. Have you scroll down just a little, please? So you can see there's different options. Typically, I'm using this one here, the VA Blue Button Report. And once you've, yeah, go, we're going to go ahead and click on that, please. Thank you. Once you've selected that, what it does is it brings up, uh, eventually, there it does, brings up this report writer. And we'll talk about this in just a minute as well. You know, scroll down, please. So the first question it's asking you of the two is how far back into your medical record you want to look. So you can use these presets if you like, or you can customize it and set a date range with the calendars. Okay. Once you've selected that, it then asks you the second question. Are you looking at something specific in your medical record? Say like a lab result? Or do you want to see the whole thing? And I'll have you click on that. So once you've answered those two questions on how you want to view your record, you scroll to the bottom. Click on submit, just like you did when you were ordering your meds. I'll have you scroll down, please, Lynn. So now your VA medical record is available for you in two different formats. 
I typically advise the veterans use the top one here, PDF, just because in my opinion it's easier to read. If you'd like, Lynn, go ahead and click on that view, please. Scroll up. So here it is, folks. Oh. Oh, sorry. No, that's fine. So here it is. And you'll notice that you can save it, you can print it, you can email it. Once you're all authenticated, you'll have 24-7 access to your VA medical record. And that's typically uh, when I'm doing demonstrations or I'm working with veterans in the primary care, that's where I cut everybody loose. And I say it's like when you're in the Army, you've got to drill to get good. Get in there and click on things. That's how you're going to learn how to use it. And when you get stuck, we always hand out a, uh, a My Healthy Vet card that has the National Help Desk number on the back, and it also has the local number at Manchester, extension 2291. So you can be at home, you can be on the road, you have a question with My Healthy Vet, and we can help you out with it. Yes, sir. Do you have to sign up for My Healthy Vet? Are you going to cover that? I am now. <laughs> so yes, there is a form that you need to complete, 5345, and we have them here today. And so just completing the form, though, isn't it. We also need to see your VA ID card. And the reason for that is we're authenticating uh, so that we make sure that we have the right veteran with the right record. Um, and then you receive what's called the premium account. So just signing up online, you can get an advanced account. You can even get a basic account. You don't even need to be a veteran to do that. But with the, uh, the view of the ID card and that form, now you'll have the premium access, which gets you the secure messaging feature. Any other questions? All right, well, I just wanted to take a, a minute to say thank you to Lynn for working with me today on this, and thank all of you again for having us. Um, look forward to signing a few of you up for the program and answering any other questions that you may have that we didn't cover. Just yes, Sergeant Major. Just one, one quick question here. What's the status of what used to be the choice program? Is that gone completely now? So um, I'm sure you have all probably heard of the Mission Act. And so what's happening is the choice program, it's still in, in existence. It's being rolled into um, care in the community slowly. Um, my understanding is, and don't quote me on this, but I can you know, definitely research it for you further, is that by June this will be completely rolled in-house. Um, I was at a, a town hall last night with the director Montoya, and he went through this a little bit, and his explanation was that here in New Hampshire, there's really not a lot of changes that are going to happen for Granite State veterans. It's pretty much the same thing. There may be a change about uh, mileage as far as distance from White River Junction and things like that, but for the Granite State veterans, there's really no change. Um, and we've been working closely with veterans who were using choice already at Manchester. We had folks that are uh, already kind of working as intermediaries. And so when they bring that in-house with care in the community, we already have the staff built up to accommodate that change that's going to happen with the Mission Act. Thank you.